So I want to start this podcast by first formally apologizing for picking yet another movie that no one has seen. No, we're not going to apologize for that. That's our thing. Well, okay, but this movie was... The, okay, you'll hear how this movie was, and when, especially when we get to the ratings. Um, but it was a movie that no one had seen. I did try really hard to just do a current movie. We, we've been a little bit delayed on doing one, and yeah. Um, but I also wanted to blame you. So, I mean, of course. Like, I didn't want to take Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why am I getting blamed? For what? Um, so I think that the reason I was drawn to this movie was because of a specific video game you've been making me play a lot of lately. Oh, so it's my fault yes. that I've been making you play games. Yes. Do you know what game? Uh, it's one of two. Choose. I'm going to say The Forest. Yes, because it's all about... You're making that seem like I've been pushing you to play The Forest. You've been pushing me to play The Forest. Excuse yourself. Um, well, regardless. So if you guys haven't heard of The Forest, it's a survival game. There's cannibals and there's caves and you're just basically trying to like not die. Um, which is very similar to this movie in that they were right. tr- trying, I mean, they failed, but trying not to die. Everyone except one person failed at not dying. Yeah. So. Spoilers. Anyways, I just wanted to say that, um, next week we are going to make sure we do a movie that you guys have seen. If and... you haven't seen next movie, then you don't watch movies. Yeah. So we're definitely doing that. And then I am also choosing a, uh, critically acclaimed movie for my next movie to make sure that we at least have... Some good ones coming up. So don't don't disappear on us. There are good things coming. So anyways, this week's movie was called Devil... The Devil Below. The Devil Below. My goodness. Okay, first first complaint. The title. Because all I want to call it is The Devil Down Below. And I right. have done it from the beginning of finding out about this movie. So... Yes, you have. It, it, it needs, it's, it needs it's to It's like be. your new version of Star Wars Star Trek. Uh, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Um, but yeah, so we chose this because it was, um, the current movie. So I'm Shay. I'm Tyler. And this is Cinematically Correct. And this is going to be a short one. We say this every time, but it really is because really this is, yeah. Well, I looked at it. There was literally one piece of trivia yeah. on IMDb, which is where I usually go. Yeah. Uh, my wife does quite a bit more research than I do, but there's not a whole lot. There's yet. not a whole lot. Oh, also I did want to thank, um, all of you guys who have been reaching out to us, letting us know that our podcasts have been, uh, devoid of sound, uh, at, after a certain point. I honestly don't know why that is because I've listened to them on our computer after I export them and, and they seem fine. Yeah. So there's something going on between the upload to Lipson and our exporting from Hindenburg. Yes. But I did want to thank you guys. And if you do notice it again, do definitely let us know. So far, three different people have told us about yeah. this. So let's just hope we don't continually add that number because that's just terrible that you guys are having that issue. But I did want to point that out. So anyways, we do have a beer. We do have a beer. So what do we got going for tonight? It's Shirley Hell. It's actually Surly Hell, but I'm going to go with Shirley Hell. Is that because I was calling it Shirley Hell? No. Well, I... I Thought that as soon as I saw it at the store. Because <laughs> it's surely hell. It's surly hell. Yeah. Or surly brewing company, hell lager, and hell because it's, there's a lot of comparisons to hell. Yeah. In this movie. Decent crack. Not bad. I'm wondering why the can's not Ooh. red, but I mean, I'll let that pass. I mean, it's got green pitchforks on it, weirdly enough. Yeah. I don't know what green pitchforks are. Just green pitchforks. Uh, it's not bad. It's got a crisp. It's a little bit more heavy on the hops than I would normally like, but it's not bad. Better beer than it was a movie. I think that's definitely a fair statement. <laughs> I mean, it's not a high bar for this movie, mm. but okay. So give us a brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. These group of people go find an abandoned town that has a mine full of blind monsters that eat people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're blind? Is that because the echolocation sound? They, Is that why you're the, assuming that? I'm just assuming because they live in the caves. Because almost universally around the world, creatures that live in like the deep, dark caves lose their, their eyesight because they don't need it. And gotcha. they develop other things. Okay. All right. Understandable. All right. So, uh, first of all, this trailer got more hype than I think the movie did. So... Yeah. The trailer for this is way better than the actual movie. 
Yeah, so when I was doing my research, I was looking for anything about the movie, right? Because there was, like, nothing out there. Um, and I did find quite a few Reddit posts as well as articles about the trailer and how excited people were. Um, the trailer seemed to have come out uh, right at the beginning of lockdown. So people were kind of, like, you know, missing movies and just, like, looking for another movie to go see. And I don't think people knew at the time that it was going to be released as a streaming movie. Um, but the trailer looked really good and people were really excited about it. Um, however... One of the complaints of the trailer was talking about the monsters being shown. So, as I always say on these podcasts, I never watch the trailer prior to seeing a movie, or very rarely. The only times that will happen is if Tyler forces me to. But you did watch the trailer, I did yes? watch the trailer. I was way more excited for this movie based off the trailer than the movie deserved. Now, did seeing the monsters raise any red flags for you? I mean, not really. I mean, it all depends. Like, certain movies, you know the monster going in. Like, you, Jaws, you know it's a shark. Like, you know it's a shark. Well, I mean, is that considered a monster? Or yeah. I, I mean... Dracula, you know he's a vampire. Yeah, that's fair. Zombies, you know they're zombies. Okay, so that didn't bother like, you. No, not especially. And it didn't bother you when you saw the movie and realized what the I mean, was. I had other issues with the monsters, but we can get into that in a in a bit. But okay. no, I didn't. It didn't bother me that the trailer had them appearing because you want you want a little bit of a hook, but you don't want to give everything away. Right, which they kind of did. Yeah, they kind but, of did. But anyway, okay. So let's start with talking about something we never talk about in our podcasts. Getting back to things, we have to do the IMDb characters. Oh, you're right. So yeah. I, I have it hooked after the trailer. But yes, the trailer was supposed to be before IMDb. And then we're supposed to move over. But I put it in the wrong order. So here we are. Um, so IMDb. Okay. Like, first of all, I have not seen almost everybody in this. Minus one person, which I was so proud of myself for being able to identify. Two people. I have only recognized one. I, I do know that I've seen the other now that I've looked at the IMDb. But I did not know that during yeah. the time of watching. So you can start. Uh, so I don't know the names of the characters, uh, other than the uh, the biggest star in this, Will Patton. Okay, and uh, what do you know him from? So he's Remember the Titans. He's in Armageddon. He's in a lot of movies. Okay. Uh, he's almost always a supporting actor. Uh, and same for this movie. And same for this movie. Yeah. Uh, he's actually also my. Lord of the Rings reference. He's my reference too, but yeah. his name is Shutman in the movie, just so we make sure we say that. Yes. Uh, Will Patton is in Armageddon with Liv Tyler, and Liv Tyler is Arwen from Lord of the Rings. Oh, all yeah. right. Well, um, okay, so he plays a townsman person who... Townie. Yeah, yeah. he's a townie. He, he's it, a coal miner, blue collar guy. Yeah, so he was around, it seems like, when the coal mines first had shut down, and he's kind of just one of the leftover people. Most of the people have fled the town or died or they don't really know. Yeah. Um, and he's kind of there protecting the town. He's got, a, like, an ominous, like, air about him. It's kind of weird and just, you know. It seems like the other people that are protecting the mine entrances are scared of him. Yes. Yeah, it seems that way. So, um, he's also my reference. He was in The Good Wife with... Matt Krasinski, or however you say his name, uh, who was Logan in Gilmore Girls. Um, but yeah, so as for his character, did I like his character? I, I I wish that they had more scenes with him in it, because I feel like we would have gotten more of a history of what was going on, and we kind of gotten a better idea of like what the town was doing. Right, you just needed a little bit more than just the, the four people going into a mine and dying, because you didn't actually care about anyone. No. There was no real character development. I had um, no connection to a single person. Yeah. I mean, the, the female characters made to look like Laura Croft from Tomb Raider. Yeah. Literally, like, yeah. did her cosplay. It was very strange. But there's no real characters here. There's just, it's... No. Um, I will mention just a few others. Um, since you mentioned the female character, she's played by Alicia Sands. Her name is Ariane, which, honestly, I don't even know that I knew her first name in the movie. Like, that's how much I cared about her character. I'm not sure that I knew. Um, looking at what she's been in. Oh, she was in From Dust Till Dawn. Mm. I mean, I've seen that, but I didn't know she was in it. Uh, it says Shots Fired, El Cid, Killing Sorry. Um, so From Dust Till Dawn is the only one I've seen. Um, she plays... I kind of want to see El Cid now. Why? Because it's a history movie or a history TV show. Oh, oh, okay. So, okay. Um, so she plays 
Okay, well, the answer uh, for this, I don't know. Okay, so what I'm going to say is she plays somebody who has some sort of a job that allows her to direct get- people to caves, but she didn't want to go in the caves. She was supposed to get him to the cave. I'm not sure what yeah. the job is. Like, I, I mean, do we know? She's a transporter? But, like... She's, I, bas- I, she's basically a high-end Uber, really. Like, But, like, a... a an Uber that doesn't care about laws? Like, they... So, at the beginning of the movie, you see her driving them, and they're being chased, and she, like, goes and hides out, and she has, like, these really epic, like, off-roading driving skills, and she knew exactly how to, like, get rid of him, and she also knew exactly how to find this super secret cave location, which, like... Yeah. So, she has, like, a specialty in caves? Like, I don't... I don't know. Neither. I don't understand. They never explained it. And no. then she was, they were like, oh, you should come in the cave. And she's like, no, I have other clients. I'm like, other clients that want to go to super secret caves? What are you talking about? I don't know. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's what she plays. So they did set it up at the beginning of the movie as if there was going to be a love story between her and the other character I'm going to talk about. But they didn't do that. So. Bravo. I mean, thank God, because it was almost painful when they were hit, getting hit, she was getting hit on. Yeah, it was. It was. A it was much. just really just kind of like, no, please, no. Yeah. Um. Okay. And the only other character I'm going to mention, and you can pick up if you want to mention others, but nobody else really stands out to me. Was um, I thought his name was Adam, but it's not. It's Adan. A D A N. Yeah. Canto. He plays Darren. Um. And he, I picked out right away as a person from you picked him out saying that he looked familiar and then it took you a, a good while we're, we're kind of glossing <laughs> over the it only took me a few i had to zone out a minute and then i came back i was very proud of myself for getting it i don't get those i things. mean she, she's really terrible at that generally so good for me good for you i mean i saw it right away and i recognize will uh will Patton, but I, oh, I have well, a congrats. I have a better eye for that. Congrats, than you do. dear. Do you want to pat in the back? Yes. Anyways, he plays a scientist who is going there to study anthracite, or that's what he says, um, to find out what um, scientific event happened that caused the town to disappear. The town to disappear, and that's what he claims. And people are questioning him and kind of not believing that he's being truthful about it. Um, but you don't get to know enough about his character to really know. If you trust him, what his There's, motivations are, you don't like know any characters in this movie, like no, and they really didn't give you enough. Like I wanted to know, like what was he really there for? Was he really there for that? Because you do find out halfway through the film that he's not actually being funded by the college he says he's being funded by, because like somebody in the car says, so, like obviously they didn't fund you, but like we don't get enough information to know what any of that means. Like, does it matter? Or why is he doing this? Like, right. is he connected to the mining people? We we know nothing. And I don't think they ever explain it. No, they don't. At so, all. as for him as an actor, I enjoy him as an actor, but there just wasn't much to his character. Yeah. So, okay, is that everything for IMDb? That is everything for IMDb. I, right. Everyone else doesn't matter. Okay, so the the thing that you cut me off and we had to revert back um, that we don't normally talk about in films is the cinematography as well as the soundtrack. So, I'll start with cinematography just because that's really quick. Um, but people were very much complaining about the fact that this movie was shot, shot and all of the shots were very dark. Now, obviously, it's in a cave, so it's going to be dark, but they were complaining that you couldn't actually see what was going on in the film. Did you find that as to be an issue? I didn't really notice that. I mean, there were a couple scenes uh, where they're walking through the, the woods with the lights off where you can't see anything. But they're in a cave, so of course it's going to be dark. I mean... I'm sure that I've seen movies with darker cinematography that I was also not bothered by or more bothered by. This really didn't cause an issue for me. No, I mean, I felt like in the scenes that was really dark, there wasn't anything I was, like, dying to see. There wasn't anything I was, like, you know... In some movies, you're, like, they're talking about something, that they're pointing at something or whatever, and you're, like, looking, and you're, like, I can't freaking see that. But in this, it wasn't really... It didn't really bother me. No, I think the, the biggest scene that... I had an issue with for that was the walking through the woods, which I already mentioned, but walking through the woods without a flashlight on and the, the whole night vision. They're trying to go a little bit Blair Witchy project with the first person camera work. And yeah. It was just, that was, that was a mess. Yeah. I, I will fully, fully agree that that was a debacle of a scene. Yeah. But okay. overall, they're in a cave and I've seen way darker movies that work. Right. 
Um, so you mentioned the soundtrack, which is another thing we don't really talk about. I mean, not really. I'm surprised. I picked up on it because I'm tone deaf, but uh, I noticed right away that a lot of it in the background, there was this just off-putting, out-of-place sounds and tones. Was it like tones from hell? It was just, it was things to make you uncomfortable, I believe. Like, Did just, it work? I mean, I found it irritating. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if irritating is what they were going for. I think they were going for ominous. Oh. But. I, like, truthfully, I, I didn't notice it at all. Like, I don't know if maybe, I, I don't know. Like, it's weird because normally that type of thing will drag my attention away and I just. I mean, I wrote down at the start that it was a bit of an ominous, interesting soundtrack, but then the movie didn't help it carry through. So I just, it was kind of an interesting thing that they could have done, but it was, it was not a good movie to carry it. Because if, if it was a good movie with that, then I would have been all about it. But it was just kind of like, okay, okay we get it. Gotcha. We get it. I got it. Please stop. Okay, yeah, I mean, my first note for the movie was quickly getting into a death scene. Okay, then. So, <laughs> I, I apparently was more focused on the fact that someone died within the first two minutes of the film than I was on the music, is what it seems like. Yeah. Um, okay, so you kind of mentioned right at the beginning of this movie that this movie reminded you of The Descent. So, I was curious, that seems to be a pretty popular movie, and I've never seen it, so I'm curious how it compares. Uh, well, this movie doesn't really compare. Uh <laughs> So they're related and oftentimes talked about in the same vein because they're they're cave movies, they're underground. You say often talked about like this movie is well, talked about. No, but I would imagine in the conversations about this movie, The Descent is the, the movie that you're comparing it to. Okay. Just because they're both dealing with caves. Uh, I would I would say that honestly, The Descent is probably, well, I, not probably, it is a better movie. You said uh, it like you were like really unsure if you were willing so to say been, that. So it's been a long time since I've seen The Descent. So you're like afraid that someone's going to come at you and say like The Descent kind was of. horrible. and I don't think it's, it was horrible. I mean, I think it had more than one strong female lead, if I remember correctly. So it wasn't just one Laura Croft Tomb Raider person. <laughs> um, I think they did a better job of wanting to care about the characters because they were just a group of friends that had gone into a cave and got lost and then they were trying to get their way out of a cave and they were being hunted by these creatures man-eating creatures mm -hmm. basically which were basically like a side evolution of humanity if i remember correctly where they humanity went into the caves and they they got lost for several hundred thousand years or several thousand years and it's just a split in the divergence of the evolution path okay which i kind of enjoy and then it just, I think it was a more suspenseful, more tense movie. Just mostly because the entire movie is the cave rather than just four scenes. Okay. So overall, The Descent was better. Yes. Um, did any of the storyline overlap other than the fact that it was in a cave or? I mean, not especially. There's no real scientific value to their, ex they were just a group of friends that were going caving. Really. I mean, was there scientific value to the, to the ex- no, here for this, because I no. feel like yeah, they said they were scientists and made a big deal about that, but they never actually used that in any way, shape, or form. I don't even know that they had tools with them to no. do anything. I mean, of the... they would have been way better off if they were like adrenaline junkie thrill seekers that were trying to find this forbidden place just to do it, or even a bunch of teenagers who are just well, right, like, like just... idiot kids who don't care and they're gonna, they're gonna go see it because. Screw I was what told. The I was told. Say. I was told not to. So yeah. now I'm going to. Yeah. 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 Would have made way more sense. Okay. Um. Another thing that is brought up in, in well, not brought up in comparison to this movie, but it's brought up in this movie that you can compare things to would be Hell, um, because oh, there's a yeah. lot of different parallels that they make in this movie to Hell, and I mean, I only really noticed one right off the bat, but obviously this movie is. I mean, there were a few references to religious undertones in this movie so there was the whole intelligent design they the they debated whether or not it was created from the big bang or not just like contacted right <laughs> uh, it's so there was a lot of that it was science versus religion 
not mutually ex- exclusive like contact. Yeah, they literally but, had a whole debate about that. Uh, so there was the whole, I think it's purgatory, and I think it's where you're judged for your sins, mine's greed, for uh, the, the main protagonist guy. If that If that is the case, and it was purgatory, what do you think each of the characters' sins would be? Or do we th- think we don't have enough information for that? Uh, I don't think we have a whole lot of information. For the scientist guy... Hubris. Hubris. Yeah. Absolutely. Not even close. Um, her sin... I don't even know her. Like, she didn't have a whole lot of personality. There's not a whole lot to go off. <laughs> she really didn't. I mean, none of the characters did. Like, it was so one-dimensional. I'm sorry. It's just bad. Yeah. So, really, yeah, we only have a main character, which would be Hubris. And then greed because he said it. He said it. We would know that. Because he literally otherwise. said it. Yeah. And we don't know why he said it other than to make speculation. Right. Uh, and then the last thing, you know, which is the most over the top, there's a lot of red in the final few scenes. Hell. Mm-hmm. And then there was the the ferry, so Karen the, the ferryman, from Bring River of Sticks. The River of Sticks and pe- carrying people to the underworld, that was kind of over the top hitting you in the head with it's like this is hell like we get it yeah yeah i don't really need that it's not necessary okay you're gonna you're doing it you you did it yep okay that's i mean it's just it seems like it was so ham-fisted yeah trying to force force some kind of controversy or deeper meaning into this movie and this this is not a movie for that no it really it's not that movie um, I mean, on a funny side, you said that this gave a lot of public safety announcements that you could... Oh, uh, oh. yes. So, <laughs> I noticed numerous OSHA violations. <laughs> uh, so, the first one, uh, the guy falls into the hole because he steps into the line. And that's a huge... Do steps not, into the line? The rope. Oh, the okay. line gotcha. on the ground. And he gets his foot snagged and he gets pulled into the hole. You don't ever do that. Like, that's the most dangerous place to be on a ship is by a coiled line, uh, caving. Any, anywhere I there's, don't think he meant to do it. So. You never mean to, to do it, but that's just really not smart. Well, that's why he got dragged yeah. to hell. So. Um, the walking around without flashlights in the woods, that's a horrible idea. I don't know like who would do that. Like, I just don't understand. I I'm mean, not trusting anyone with night vision and not having the ability to see myself. I'm, nope, yep. not doing it. Nope. Also, if you're going to do that, bring night vision for everyone. Yeah, it just doesn't, it just didn't make any sense to me. And I can't imagine somebody just being like, yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'm just going to totally walk in pitch black. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds yeah, great. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, that's, those are the main, the main two. Like, it's just, it's... Yeah, it's one of those movies where you, like, scream at the screen, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I do not understand. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask one question about things that they did in this movie. So, when somebody goes down into the hole, the townspeople, every time they went to the hole, wanted to cut the line and leave the person there, dead or alive. They didn't care. They just wanted to cut the line and shut the hole. Yeah. So... Do you think there was a reason for that? Like, why they weren't willing to save the people? I mean, because it got to the point of even as, at the end of the movie, this girl was hanging on a rope, and she wanted help being pulled up. And the guy was like, no, sorry, can't do it, gonna cut the rope, until the William Patton character came in and, like, helped her up. But like, I, don't, I think it was trying to build a, a sense of urgency for the movie, where it's, we can't let these things get out and kill all of humanity. But, that, but like was, you're looking in the hole and you see what's coming up is is a human. I mean, there was a there was another one that came up right behind her. Well, yeah, but so so you kill the human because you're not willing to. I think what they were trying to go for is if we let them out, humanity is going to die. But that first off, they're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. Secondly, we have guns. <laughs> A lot of them in this country. Thirdly, there's also the army. Well, also, you're there with weapons to right. kill them, so you could, you know, let the the one out that's chasing her and then yeah. promptly kill it. Or seal the hole after she's out. Like, it's not that hard right. to Right. You have ten people there. You can 
run her out of the hole by all grabbing on and pulling. Right. But they did it earlier in the movie, too, yeah. with, I forget who, but they were like, no, 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 cut the line. And I'm just like... Well, there's a two people down in the hole. It was the main scientist, or the special security person and her, and... And he was like, nope, nope, we're leaving him there. Yeah. I'm like, it just seems so rash and strange that there's no it's just, willingness... It's, 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 it's a zero sum game. Even they didn't care about the other people in this movie, and we're supposed to. Right. Come on. Yeah. Um, okay, so one of the things in this film that's probably important, considering it's a horror film, is the monster, right? Um, yeah. So we get very little information at the beginning of the movie. They're discussing, you know, the the hell versus science, and so when you start realizing there's a monster, you the viewer is supposed to question whether or not this is like demons or is it, you know, some animal of some sort right Right. and they don't really give you an answer the closest we get to an answer is the person who had the science versus religion thing it was actually on the religion side of things um was down in the hole and he said that these um operate like ants because they have colonies um so you're kind of led to believe that it's probably more uh, biological animal side of things than religious side of things but first of all i wanted to ask do you think that matters to the film as a whole or I mean, not really. I would have just gone with their biological. I, I don't know if you def, you necessarily needed a definitive answer either way. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a good monster. So, I like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm not invested in this movie. I don't care if it's hell or if it's just a, a monster animal. Like, I'm indifferent. I don't care. I'm... Right. Over it. Now, I will say that if the movie had gone a different way, right? So if you had found out that the head scientist had a purpose, a reason to be there, right. and maybe the reason was not as pure as just looking for anthracite. Maybe he was looking to find out if there were really demons, and maybe he wanted to, like, you know, expose that to the world or something like that. Funded by the Catholic Church or just... Right. But proving that hell way, is real. If that had been the case, then yes, it would matter, right? right. Then it would matter because that's the, the plot of the movie. So if, I almost felt like they had different ideas of what they wanted this movie to be, and they never fully like decided on one. So they it's had... like they, it's like they all filmed their pieces separately and they put a movie together without talking about it first. Right, because I do feel like it could have been more interesting. If you had made the main character kind of like, kind not evil, but kind of like, you know, a shitty person and, you know, doing things for himself, kind of disregarding everybody else. And ha- you later find out this reveal of like this awful like motive that he had. Because you know that the motive isn't anthracite, but we never find out what it is. Mm-hmm. And if it was like this awful thing and then maybe it matters what the, what it is. And- or just have a twist where hell is real. And he is getting dragged down to hell because he's a, a shit person. Right. Or something something more than what we got. Just anything more than we got. Right. It's just, there was but, nothing there. Right. But so I think that to say that it doesn't matter what the, the monster is, is only to say that it doesn't matter because there is no plot to this movie. But it could have mattered. There are right. scenarios where it could have, right? Yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of like a mash of a bunch of different movies. So they pulled in... Uh, the cave theme from the descent. They pulled in the the colony hive mentality from Storm Stormship Troopers. You got the sound from Alien. Right. It's just it's just everything. And then the monster kind of looked like the thing, like it was a little, yeah. Not. It was certainly special effects from the 1980s. Oh, gosh. So but, go ahead. What What's your gripe about the monster? The monster was a guy in a suit. And you have had so many better monsters that were a guy in a suit that were actually good. Well, I mean, you could have filmed it in a way where you couldn't tell if you didn't have the special effects to do that. You could, you know, do... There are some movies where you don't even see. You only see, like, the, the shadow or the silhouette. I mean, if they had to do that, they could have. Like, the, the first scene where the, the sun gets dragged into the, the mine. You don't actually see the monster. You just see the sun disappear. Right, which is way creepier than most of the movie, honestly. Yeah. That, that opening scene, I was kind of like, all right, I'm in. All right. Yeah, I was kind of like, Get okay, it. I can. All right. Yeah. But no, then they just had a guy walking around in a monster suit. Right. Oh, well, since we're talking about the opening scene, the eye is going black. 
Now, I thought from the get opening scene that that was going to be like a thing. Like, okay, their eyes go black when they die, whatever. And her eyes went black when she was down there. And then it did go black again when she was up. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that must mean something. And they ended the movie without ever explaining what the eyes going black means. I think it was related to the the paralysis venom where they stab you and then you... Your eyes go black from paralysis? I don't know, darling. That does not make sense because if it's a biological animal, do they have poison that blackens your eyes? I don't have an answer, darling. Because eyes going know. black makes me think of demons, right? Like, that's what you think I think of. that's probably where they were going with that, but it just did People didn't talk to each other during this movie is what happened. Because then no. my question was then, if if it was demonic, right, if that's what it meant, then did she still have the demon in her? Like, that doesn't just go away, right? Like, that would mean, or if she, if it was poison from an animal, was she still poisoned in some way? And would she be acting differently? Would she be, you know, maybe not helpful to the town? Because maybe her motives are corrupted, or maybe mm. she's one of them now. Maybe that's how they turn them. Like maybe, Right, maybe that's how more of them get spawned, and it's not... Right, like, there's a lot that could have been cool about that. And I was kind of waiting for it to be, like, you know, there showing was... her eyes black and, like, she pulls him away or something. I was, like, waiting for something like that. Right, it just, there was nothing, there was nothing. No, but there was so just... many opportunities where I was like, okay, I, I see, I see you. I know what's going to happen gonna... here. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> just got your hopes up and they're crashed. Yeah, and the... exactly. Um, okay, so Shipman, we talked about him a little bit. Um, he has been in this town since the mines kind of shut down, and he's been protecting the town from the caves, I guess. Um, but let's face it, he's never asked for help. And so my question to you is, what do you think his motivation is for keeping this all to himself? And then also, what do you think he meant when he said that his sin is greed? I mean, I don't have a good answer, because my first thought is, if... They live underground, seal up the underground, and close down with debris. Like, like cement it over or something? No, I was, I was thinking just blow up the entrance so it's covered in debris, and then, sure, put in some concrete, and then then you're you're done. You don't have to worry. Right, why do we have this flimsy little crate? Like, what's going on here? There are way more permanent solutions where you could seal it up and be like, yeah, that sucker's taken care of. You could also, like, fill in the hole, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, it just seems silly. I mean, divert a local river to drown them all. Yeah. Like, there are way more permanent there solutions. plenty of options. You've yeah. had years. You've had decades to figure <laughs> this out more than the grill off of a Chevy Silverado. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think his motivation is for keeping it that way? I think it gives him purpose, but... At the same oh, time, that's sad. That's really depressing. I, darling, this movie is depressing. <laughs> this movie was terrible. Uh, I mean, I think he feels responsibility for what has happened because he was the the mine foreman, and he probably feels like he had he dug a hole to expose these things, uh, which is a whole separate thing that I want to talk about. That I'm gonna spring on you later, but he he probably feels like. He was trying to earn the money for the mine by digging too far. And like Lord of the Rings, they delved too deeply and too greedily and they got the Balrog. Oh boy. Lord. Uh, but, All right. but I think that's where they were coming from. So is that why the writers didn't dive too deep into the plot? Because they were afraid yeah. they would bring us to hell? Is that what it was? I mean, we're there. So <laughs> they, they should have dived a little deeper. <laughs> Okay. I, I do have a question for you oh, related to that. Okay, great. So the animals had been living down there before the mine was a thing, right? Uh, they yes. didn't just uh, magically appear. I mean, I guess. We, we don't know, right? If they were sealed off from the world, what did they eat? I mean, like mites and stuff in the dirt, I would have to assume, and like whatever Themselves? else. Themselves? Or there's not there's no animals in there like there's no living animals down there. Really. I'm, well, I'm aren't there like worms and stuff in dirt? Darling, this is deep down in. Do you know what lives deep nothing, down in the dirt? Nothing. Literally nothing. Well, then uh, maybe they ate dirt. I, okay. Well, then well, why we, do they? We don't know what they are, so we don't know. 
do they eat people? Because they ate a lot of people in this movie. Well, apparently they do eat people. Well, I just... Maybe that was part of their evolution. I guess, but... Or they didn't live down there and they're demons and they spawned from... Sins of the world? Yes. Yeah, great. That's that's exactly what this very deep thought-provoking movie <laughs> is is suggesting. Yeah, well, you know, just trying yeah. to help it out a little bit. So, um... No, you seal it up and kill them all. Okay, and... Or just wh- pumping gas, like... Carbon monoxide, or you really thought too much about how to murder a bunch of underground animals. dwelling monsters. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and when he said that his sin was greed, you're thinking that it's because he was the foreman at the mine. Yeah. Okay, so he just kept it running for too long, and he feels responsible for all their deaths. And he feels like he pushed them to dig too far. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Uh, so what is it you're gonna spring on me? Because I'm afraid to wait. Oh, it's the monsters. What do they eat? Oh, oh, great. Oh. No, so there's no answer there. Like, what is what? Ha- where did the monsters come from, and what did they eat before they were exposed to human? Yeah, I, I, I don't there's, have. I don't. There's no answer. No. Okay. And that's a huge glaring plot hole. Okay. Um. Okay. So this movie people are speculating is based on one of two towns so do you know anything about the towns that it supposedly could be based on not at all okay so the first town that it could supposedly be based on is in alaska and it's called portlock and i'm only going to read to you a small bit about this town but it says it was abandoned around the 1940s it was reported that several Doll sheep hunters had disappeared in the hills outside Portlock. It was also stated in a 1973 article from the Anchorage Daily News that dismembered bodies of some of the missing had washed ashore in the lagoon. These events led the residents of the community to flee en masse, and the town's post office officially closed between 1950 and 1951. So... How much would it suck to be the postman in a town that has no post? Right? (laughs) Guys! You're going to leave me here with the disembodied... Dismembered bodies? Uh, apparently. That's gotta suck. Yeah. So, I mean, that one's possible because it's about a town that, you know, people okay, flee and that. there's a bunch of dead people. Now, this one is more likely. And this one, I can't find a little nice cute snippet to read to you. Um, but it is the town that Silent Hill is based off of. Okay. okay so, it's Centralia, Pennsylvania. And I'm going to do my best to give you kind of a summary, but I'm very bad at remembering all details. So, bear with me. Um, But basically, it's a mining town that was abandoned, and uh, it was overproducing anthracite, and there was a bunch of fires that raged from below, and there was like a hole that happened in the ground that all the fires were raging out of, and ended up where there was toxic gas coming out of the hole, and people started dying, and essentially the town was abandoned because of all of this happening. So, either one of these towns could be... The, or the both. One. Why not both? It could be. Could be both. So one of the reasons that people are thinking that it uh, is based on this town is because the town was divided on whether or not the fires that were coming from below were actually a threat to the town. And one of the things that happened was, it says here, statewide attention to the fire began to increase, culminating in 1981 when a 12-year-old <laughs> resident named Todd Dabowski fell into a sinkhole four feet wide by 150 feet deep that suddenly opened beneath his feet in a backyard his cousin 14 year old eric wolfgang pulled him out of the hole and saved his life the plume of hot steam billowing from the hole was tested and found to contain a lethal level of carbon monoxide so that's when people started realizing like oh this ain't good like this is bad like a sinkhole literally showed up underneath him so how who how did he save him by pulling him out of the hole i i don't know 14 year olds apparently like epic i don't know like, that's a lot of rope to carry, 150 feet whole. I, I, I don't know. It just says he pulled him out. Mm. But anyway, so there's even books written about this town, and I don't know. But, I mean, I honestly think that both of these towns could actually make really interesting movies if you, like, actually told the story of the town rather than whatever this was. I mean... Yeah, you do want to kind of a little bit more. It may be a short because there's not a whole lot to the first one. It's just it's dead people. Uh, you don't think it'd be super interesting to like make up the story of a town where all of the 
all of the town members start showing up on shore dismembered and then you have to like piece together what happened like you th- i can think of a million different stories that would be super fascinating sure i just don't know if it's a full-length movie why like, not i don't know there could be a, a murderer that was doing that there could be like a epic disaster that had happened that was doing that and then like a little girl is the one discovering it and she spends her whole life trying to figure out what happened and she, her whole life oh mission is piecing it together. Great. This is now my life. Yeah, so like there's plenty of things that would be great. Plus it's in Alaska. Like Alaska has no people. It's mostly animals. So like she could have like an animal befriend her as like a detective with her and like the animal knows things and can sniff it out and stuff and like can find like where the bodies were actually being kept before they're thrown into the water. So is this a history movie or <laughs> is it a science fiction movie? It's like all of them, right? Like it's it's all of them. So oh, yeah. great. Yeah. So you're welcome. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, but which one do you think is more likely town? The first or second? I mean, probably the second. Even though it's based, even though Silent Hill is also based on it. I mean, probably. I think you're pulling a lot of inspiration. I mean... I don't honestly know if either, but I would go with the second one because this was definitely more Pennsylvania than Alaska in terms of the scenery. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. It was West Virginia, Pennsylvania, just middle America. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I had on that. The last thing that I had was talking about the ending. Okay. So, I mean, the ending of the movie, you see her get into a car and she is asked to work for him and she says no, but then she gets back in the car and she's like, yes. And they do a close up on a lock that has like a piece of wood through it. And then they like drive away as if like partners in crime or something. But like, what happened? What was that ending? Like, explain it to me as if I am too, please. Thank you. He, she negligently doesn't tell him that they are all gonna die because the queen is dead and they just have to outlive the last of the the non-reproducing monsters Mm -hmm. true or just find a way to kill them all in the cave which you should have done in the first place 30 years ago uh did the queen die she swallowed a grenade so she has to be fucking so does that mean that the species is going to die out? Or is there, like, multiple queens? Like, There's got to be on? multiple queens. I mean, it's... I don't know. They, it can't be just that one anomaly. And if it is, then she just... So she won, right? She's done? They're, they're done. But yeah, it's... it's so she could have just been like, Oh, no, I got I to gotta go to my next engagement because I already finished this one. So Like, dude, I got you. They're, they're going to die. It's fine. Yeah. Like, you guys have been trying to do this for, like, years, and, like, I was here for, like, a day, and I got it, so. Yeah, how does she not tell him about that? (laughs) Also, if she does go with him, how do they not take her car instead of just leaving it there? Because her her, her SUV is still parked out on the other side of the gate. Yeah, and she just left it there. Like, she's cool with it, yeah. But she also left the guy behind. Like, I understand that he got killed and all of that. But, like, at the beginning, well, not the beginning, the beginning of that scene, he's like, yeah, I can't, like, I can't go. Like, I can't. So he's, like, sitting there. And she was cool with that. She was just like, yeah, and like, yeah, be lazy. It's fine. And then when they're at the, um, at the rope, she just lets him sacrifice himself. Like, she doesn't even look sad when he cuts the rope. Like, she's just kind of like, like, I mean, okay, like, I guess I live now, so cool. Like... You're not going to cry. You're not going to be like, no, don't do nothing. Just like, all right, man. I mean, Dolly, do none of the characters in this movie can't, you care about at all. I would say, with maybe the exception of the old dude, who is in the movie for a total of 10 seconds, and then sacrifices himself with a Molotov cocktail to take as many of those sons of bitches down as possible. Fair. Like, best character in this whole movie. He's, we don't even know who his character name is. Nothing about him. In the movie for 10 seconds, blows up a few monsters heroically. By far the best character. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, I just thought of a great twist that they could have what? done. So, if it was hell, right, yeah. and his, and they were there because of their sins, and they have to rectify their sins, otherwise they go to hell, right? That's the whole idea of purgatory. Well, if his sin was hubris, as we said, right, and he cuts the rope, 
thus not being prideful and only thinking of himself, but rather thinking of somebody else, which would break his fatal flaw, then when he cut the rope, then he would, like, not die. Like, he would, like, vanish or, like... You're thinking, like, he'd be raptured up into heaven like this is the end? (laughs) James Franco going up (laughs) in the beam of light and then flipping everyone off and then getting sent back down? (laughs) Really? That's... That's where you're going with that? Well, I'm just saying, like, if you have this whole setup where you're in purgatory because of a sin and, like, you know, whatever, like, you're supposed to rectify the you sin You are giving this movie way more credit than it <laughs> deserves, darling. But wouldn't that be so much better? Like, yes. Cut and then, like, no, you fixed it. You do not die. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. See, so much better. So much better. Anyways, do you have anything else you want to say about the movie? No. Okay. Terrible so movie. let's move into our history minute. Tyler's History Minute. All right, so I'm going to stretch. So I want to talk about the history of mining. So the oldest mine is Nguvenya Mine in Swaziland. Okay. And it dates back to 43,000 years old. Jeez. And this is pre- Metalworking. This is back in the Stone Age. Uh-huh. So they were mining uh, pieces of obsidian and flint to make sharp rocks. Okay. To stab things. Lovely. Uh, it advanced a little bit from there. Uh, so the Romans actually figured out a way to use hydraulic mining, mm-hmm. which is to use pressurized water to wash away and erode the sides of mountains and hills. Okay. To get to the un, the exposed bedrock for gold and precious metals and things. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I want to talk about the coal mine. Well, actually, no. Before I do that, uh, canary in the coal mine is a thing. Okay. What is it? So canary in the coal mine is the first warning signs that there's a problem, which comes from uh, the United States, I believe, where they would actually take live canaries down into the coal mine. And if the canary either started to react or die, they knew to get out because the air quality was bad. So it was kind of a... Oh, poor canaries. It was kind of a way to test the air quality before we had the ability to do that electronically. Uh, So they sacrificed canaries for their own health. Lovely. Yes, they did. I mean, they didn't have a whole lot of health left from coal and black lung anyway, but I mean, they didn't die of carbon monoxide poisoning in the mine. Good as for often. Them. So nice. And then lastly is the Kohler so uh super deep borehole. Okay. Which they mentioned this movie. They did mention this. They so mentioned one in Russia, I believe. That's the Kohler. Oh, sweet. Super deep borehole. So it began in uh, May of nineteen seventy. As a purely academic thing. They wanted to see if they could get down to the deepest point ever, which they did. Uh, so they went down 12,262 meters. Wow. Which is the equivalent of 40,230 feet. Jesus. And they were a bit off on their predictions because they expected it to be less hot, much cooler at that depth. Yeah. It was 180 Celsius or like three, 200 something Fahrenheit, it was very, very hot. Mm. Uh, and that was the deepest they could go, why? Uh, so at that depth, <clears throat> uh, the the rock was so heated and so pressurized that it was behaving more like plastic okay. than rock. And they couldn't they couldn't drill any further. Gotcha. So, so yeah. did they find anything exciting down there or just that? No. Uh, just I'm sure they found a bunch of different things, but not not anything that I could find noteworthy. It's just it's a very big, very, very deep hole. Is it still in existence or do they fill it in? I think it's still there. I don't know if they filled it in. Probably put a little grate over it, you know, yeah. make sure that it's safe. <laughs> oh, that, that'll be safe for everyone. Yeah. It's... Maybe put a little cuidado sign <laughs> outside of it, you know. <laughs> Keep out? Yeah. Just, just to be safe, you know. Yeah. Portal to the underworld. <laughs> do not explore. No, because then somebody's going to do the, ooh, don't try, push the red button. Whee! That's, that's a long fall. Yeah. 
40,000 feet straight down. Yeah, if somebody jumped in there, they deserve it, though. Yeah, if you're stupid enough to jump into a, a hole that is 40,000 feet deep, you deserve all of the bad things that come <laughs> with that. Yeah, fair. Okay, anything else? That's all I got for the History Minute. All right, so let's move into these reviews. Let's see if they stack up to what we think. Audience ask, there's nothing. You, oh, audience ask, yeah, right. So... This is one of the reasons we are going to make sure that we do movies that you guys know. At least the next one will definitely be, and the, and the one after will be a critically acclaimed movie. So hopefully you guys will want to see it, even if you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, no audience asked. I didn't expect you guys to have seen it, so I'm, I'm actually not disappointed this week. All right. So reviews, because we're over the critiquing our listeners, because they are letting us down. Habitually. I said I'm not disappointed. I am. Oh. I'm personally upset that oh. no one has watched this movie. No one has had to suffer with me. <laughs> Misery does enjoy company. So, reviews. Reviews. Rotten Tomatoes has it at a zero. <laughs> the critic score is actually zero. And I originally was thinking, like, okay... It's a zero because no one's seen it. No, no, no. That's the critic score. Like, the critics have seen it. They have to. That's their job. <laughs> uh, the audience score is 20. <laughs> Astoundingly poorly rated. This might be our first ever zero. <laughs> Z- actual zero. I don't know if we've done a zero. We might have done a yeah. zero. Before, <laughs> but it's a zero. Okay. Well, can I rate first because you usually do? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, in fairness to this movie... I- while it was a bad movie, it's not a zero. Now, there are issues, right? There's no good plot. They The actors aren't bad, but they just don't really have characters to be. So they just I don't know if that's their fault or the writer. It's definitely the writer's fault. Yeah. Um, the, the movie had potential. There were parts of the movie where they, you absolutely were like, okay, all right, I'm in. Do this, and we're, we're, we're good here. It was all the first five minutes of it. Yeah. Basically. But, but it wasn't a zero. Like, I've, I've seen worse movies. This movie bored me, but I wasn't, like, laughing at the atrociousness of it the whole time. Like, it, no. I've seen worse. So I was going to give it a five. So I, I didn't like it. I, I wouldn't watch it again. But I, I didn't think it was so bad that it deserved a zero. Like, there were good points and there were good thoughts that they just didn't fully flesh out. So, like, like chill your crap there, critics. Like, that's mean. I was going to give it a th- Oh my god. I mean, I'm still being nicer than the average person, honestly. And that might be charitable. I don't know what I gave Big Trouble, but it's right there. It's right there. But it's not campy and just like awful and just like you're looking at all the bad things. No, it just seems objectively bad. they, They just really didn't finish it. I almost wonder if, you know, maybe the filming... Or the the finishing touches of the movie or something happened during the pandemic where they weren't able to, like, fully finish out the storyline. And so they kind of just put together pieces. Like, you know, some films, like, will do, like, different scenes, like, separately. And then they put it together and they're like, eh, this doesn't work together. So they refilm something. And yeah. maybe they didn't have that option and they just kind of had to use whatever pieces they got. You're giving this movie far more credit than I'm it deserves. I'm just trying to believe that it's not as bad as people it's say really it bad. is. It's really bad. Three. Three. Oh. I think I give Big Trouble a two. It's, it's like right there. It's there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, all right. So we didn't like it, but doesn't mean you won't. And I'm not saying not to get it. I will say I would recommend if you are going to rent it to wait until the price goes down. It is $7 right yeah, now on expect- Amazon Prime. It was, it was almost the same price to just buy the movie outright. Yeah, now that is and because it just came out, so I'm sure that it will drop in price. So if you are going to get it, I would recommend waiting. Um, there's also no information out there about it. So if you like going on to different websites to kind of read about the movie after you've watched them, and a lot of people like that, you ain't doing that with this movie yet. So maybe give it a little bit of time. You could change it up and write some of the information. Yeah, I mean, okay. You could contribute to the IMDb trivia. Because there's nothing there. If you guys do do that, please send us a link because I would love to see contributions from (laughs) y'all. That would just be funny. Um, But okay, so next week you chose a movie and we gave you clarifying instructions that you must pick something that everybody has seen and that most people enjoy. Yes. So I took those and I picked a movie that is a fairly recent movie. Not terribly recent, but not 50s. And 
it's fairly overwhelmingly positive. So I picked uh, The Blind Side, which is a football movie. Shocker for you. Uh, it's usually football or history. We don't really get much else from you. I mean, it's kind of a weird... It's also kind of related to economics because I actually read the book, The Blind Side, mm-hmm. in college okay. originally for, uh, I think, my game theory class. Or maybe I read the other book by the same author, Moneyball. Okay. And talking about the using statistical analysis, all of that. So it's going to be a really fun movie for me. I hope you like it. You've never seen it. I've never seen it. And and warning, when he says fun movie for him, that usually means that he's going to talk a lot about things that have nothing to do with the movie, but he's really excited about. So the podcast should be informative. And you'll learn a lot. Um, but if you're coming into it looking for a picking a part of the finer aspects of the film, you're probably not going to find that. But you will learn a lot that you probably didn't know before. So yeah. definitely come back for next week. And as we always say, we are going to have audience ass out. And because I know that you guys have seen this movie, please, please, please give us as many as you can. Like, we will do extra next week. We will do four if we can get four. That would be incredible. I will be... I'll do six. Uh, what, what, however many you want to post, I'll do them. Yeah. So I will be singing your praises. We'll do a whole segment that is just, like, elongated for y'all. And we'll shout out every podcast who's involved in it, whatever it may be. Or if you have a blog or you have a YouTube channel, whatever you got, tell us and we'll shout it out. Like, don't care. Just please give us them so that I don't feel like I have no friends and that nobody ever talks to me or listens to me. So don't make me sad anymore. That is all I have. Yeah. Do you have anything else? No. And this is a very short podcast. Okay, it's already a, an hour. We did a great job. We're so good at keeping it. We kind under. of went off the rails a little bit at places, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to talk to us, yeah, you can tweet find us. her. Yeah, tweet me. So, I'm at Cinematically C. Tyler is Blame Tyler CC. You can tweet him, but please tag me because he doesn't check. Um, no. You can also email us, cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com. Find us on any platform you really want to, but Twitter's where you're going to really find us the most. Um, and yeah, that is really all I have. So thank you to Jake at Office Music for our intro and outro music. And we'll be back next week with The Blind Side. Thank you all for listening.